policy, as long as, like I said, as long as it's not restricted under the, I think, like I said, Section 20 that specifically relates to wages, benefits, and a rule in the, in the uh, contract. And I haven't been privy to actually sit down and read contracts. I'm very good at it. I did it on my prior career. I actually negotiated contracts. I actually argue, argued labor relations from both the union standpoint when I was rank and file and the company standpoint in front of the National Railway Labor Board. So I know a lot about it. I'd have an open policy. If it's not covered on, on in an area that I've mentioned, an employee can come in, if I'm mayor, sit down, I'll listen to them, and then I'll call in their supervisor, and I'll find out the management side, what's going on with the employee and see if we can work this out. You know, that's called leadership. And but are, you, but are you circumventing your paid administrative staff if you do that? Well, that's what I'm talking about. That is a paid administrative, uh, administrative staff because you have 16 administrative staffs in the city of Cedar Falls from supervisor level to manager to directors. And that's what I would do. You have supervisors. You bring the supervisor in. If you can't resolve it there, then you bring the manager in. If you can't resolve it there, then you bring the director in. Now you're at the top of the, the heat. That's the director. And you settle it. You get it figured out. Most of this stuff is not rocket science. It's pretty well uh, handled with, with proper communication skills. You can work through stuff. And the stuff you can't, then you, you, you take a hard look at what you can do to change what the problem is within the constraints of your, your agreements. And you can also bring your labor representatives in, as long as it's not under Section 20.